Welcome to this new video, where I will try to explain how to achieve smooth vertical scrolling, downwards, of a map. In the description, you can find an implementation in Assembly and XC Basic. First of all, let's see how our map is represented. Normally, a screen is made up of 40 by 25 characters that occupy 1000 bytes. This size is doubled if we also consider the colors, but since the latter are 4 bits, we can store 2 in 1 byte, obtaining 1500 bytes per screen. However, even compressing the colors, to scroll 10 screens would require about 15 kilobytes, and the situation would worsen if the scrolling were multi-directional. One solution is to compress the information, grouping the characters into blocks better known as tile. In the example, you can observe a tile made up of 4x4 four four characters. Considering also the compressed colors, this tile will therefore occupy 24 bytes. The tile is stored in a separate memory area from the map, and a unique number, 1 byte, in our case, is associated with it. As you can see, the tile with the tree is repeated several times, so it can be reused. The compression in this method is precisely in avoiding storing the same groups of characters multiple times. If we consider a screen of 40 by 24, it will be covered with 10 by 6 tile, thus occupying 60 bytes instead of 1440, or a compression of 24 times. This is a significant saving, but we must don't forget to add the memory occupied by the definition of the tiles which, as seen, occupy 24 bytes each. In the example demo, we have a total of 16 screens that occupy 960 bytes. The tiles are 32, so they occupy 768 bytes. In total we will have 1728 bytes for the entire map, against the 24,000, required without this compression scheme. Our scrolling algorithm, therefore, will have to take into account this way of compressing maps. The downside is that, obviously, things get complicated compared to not having to deal with tiles. In fact, it's much easier to achieve multi-directional scrolling having a map and memory without any compression. Let's now see how smooth scrolling works in general. The D011 register allows you to move the screen vertically by one pixel at a time, up to a maximum of 7. By default, it contains the value 27. The first three bits contain the scrolling offset from 0 to 7. Initially the offset is equal to 3. The fourth bit, if set to 0, reduces the rows to 24. Ultimately, by turning off the first four bits, I will make sure that the first seven pixels of the first row are covered. At this point one might wonder why seven pixels are covered and not eight? Let's find out by taking a closer look at how scrolling works through this hardware register. Note that the visible pixel line at the top is number 7, belonging to the last line of the first row of characters. By increasing the first three bits of the register, the lines will go down by one pixel at a time. So, since we can only scroll by 7 pixels, and not 8, to discover an entire character of 8 pixels, one pixel must already be visible. This is the reason why the VIC2 only covers 7 pixels. At this point we cannot go further with the register. So how can I continue with the 8th pixel? Simple. It's enough to reset the scrolling register, going back 7 pixels, and, immediately afterwards, move all the character rows of the screen down by 1. To better observe the effect, we first move the characters downwards. For the moment keep in mind that the sign currently starts exactly on the first visible line. Now we reset the register to zero. As you can see, the upper edge of the sign which was previously located on the first visible line, is now on the second. 
so we managed to lower the graphics by one further line. On the other hand it's logical, in when being the character's high 8 pixels, going down I will have moved of such height. At this point the register is at 0, so we can repeat the procedure by scrolling another 7 pixels. However, there is still one fundamental step missing. When we move the characters down by one row, the first one remained empty. This is the row hidden by the border. What we need to do is fill it quickly immediately after moving the characters. In summary, what we need to do when we reach the 8th pixel, is to move the video memory down, the color one, and draw the top row by extracting the right rows from the tiles. Everything must be started when the raster beam reaches the lower edge, and finished before it starts drawing the screen again. This is a very arduous task for the 6510, which cannot do everything in time, especially if the area to be scrolled is almost as large as the whole screen. The solution is to perform these operations before reaching the 8th pixel. In practice, a second hidden video page is used in which, when we scroll the first pixel, we only copy the first three rows moved down by one character. At the same time, I will fill the first line with the two rows of the next two tiles. Being two tiles wide eight characters, after five pixels I will be able to completely fill the 40 columns of the screen. At the second pixel, we will copy the next three rows, write the other tiles and so on, until at the eighth pixel we will have the entire screen scrolled by one character. At that point, we will simply have to swap the two pages, showing the hidden one, reset the hardware scrolling and that's it. Note that, together with the characters, we will also copy the color memory three rows at a time into a buffer. This is because unfortunately the VIC2 does not allow to have a second page also for the colors. We cannot touch them before the 8th pixel, because it would affect what we see in the visible page during the scrolling of the 7 pixels. So the color memory must necessarily be updated at the 8th pixel, and this can be done simply by copying the just created color buffer, from top to bottom. As you can see, Performing a simple scrolling in one direction is not a trivial operation due to the very tight times we've to complete the operations, aggravated by the tile representation of the map. In the description you can find the commented sources that implement this technique. Now I leave you to the demonstrative and, as always, if you like this content, I invite you to subscribe, activate the notification and share it as much as possible. Only if I reach a sufficient number of subscribers and views will I be able to continue with these topics. Thank you and see you next time.